Hey there. So you want to get a grip on this whole China EV thing, right? I get it. Everyone's talking about it. But what's the real deal with China's electric vehicle boom? It's definitely got people's attention. That's for sure. But today, we're going to do more than just scratch the surface. We're going deep. We're going to figure out how China managed to become a major player in the EV market, and more importantly, what it all means for the future. We've got a ton of interesting research to dig into today. Sounds fascinating. I'm ready to dive in. Me too. And you know what's really interesting? This whole China EV thing, it didn't just happen overnight. Right. It's been building for a while. It's like their EV journey actually started way back with e-bikes. Can you believe that? Yeah. Decades ago, they were already thinking about electric mobility. It was a different world back then. Totally. It seems like they were already thinking way ahead about mass adoption, about making electric vehicles affordable. They were playing the long game from the start. And that's what's crucial to understand here. China's approach to EVs, it wasn't some recent trend or a knee-jerk reaction. It was a carefully thought-out strategy. They saw the potential of EVs early on, not just to catch up with the West. But just to pass them. Exactly. To leapfrog the competition and lead a new industrial revolution. So let's unpack that. How did they actually do it? How did they leapfrog everyone else? Well, while other countries were just dipping their toes into the EV waters, China was building the entire swimming pool. They were creating the infrastructure, the market, everything needed for a full-blown electric revolution. It's like they were setting the stage for something huge. They were. And one example that really stands out is their investment in electric buses and public transport. They went all in on electrifying their transportation system. And it's mind-blowing the scale of it. Did you know they have over 100,000 electric buses already? That's more than everywhere else combined. It's incredible. What does that tell us about their long-term vision for transportation? Well, it shows how committed they were to creating a massive domestic market for EVs. They knew that to make these things affordable, they needed to drive demand. Right. So by electrifying their buses, they weren't just trying to reduce emissions or whatever. They were guaranteeing a huge market for their own EV manufacturer. Exactly. And driving down production costs through economies of scale. Yeah. They knew what they were doing. Like a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Mm -hmm. Build the infrastructure, create the demand, and boom, the industry takes off. You got it. And it's important to note that it wasn't just about churning out electric vehicles as quickly as possible. They were laser focused on making them affordable and accessible to everyday people. Right. And now we're seeing those affordable EVs popping up in markets all over the world. They're making their move. They definitely are. We actually came across an article that said the MG ZS EV, a Chinese made electric car, is the cheapest EV available right now in Australia. Wow. Yeah, that's a big deal. That's a huge statement. It shows how serious they are about competing globally. Price is a powerful weapon. Absolutely. And they're not afraid to use it. They're not just content with being the biggest player in their own backyard. They want to be a global force. It's incredibly savvy, honestly. Mm. They use their own market as a test ground, a way to refine their technologies, figure out how to keep costs down. And now, now they're ready to take on the world. Exactly. And here's the kicker. It's not just about affordability anymore either. They're pushing the boundaries of what's possible with EV technology too. Oh yeah, they are. I mean, one of the things we found even mentioned a Chinese electric car that can do a little jump. Right, a jumping electric car. It sounds like something straight out of a movie or something. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. But I think it speaks to something really important. They're not afraid to experiment, to have a little fun with it. They're not just following the rule book, they are writing their own. Exactly. And that willingness to try new things, to think outside the box, it's a big part of why they're moving so fast. They're playing the long game, they're playing it smart, and they are not afraid to make bold moves. But let's get into the companies themselves a bit more because we read about some fascinating players in the EV market. Okay, so we've talked about how China is using their domestic market as a testing ground to refine their technologies and figure out how to keep costs down to take on the world. But um, It's a brilliant strategy, really. It really is. But there are a lot of names in these articles. BYD, SAIC, Xiaomi. I'll be honest, I didn't recognize a lot of these. So for those of us who aren't totally familiar with all these companies who are the major players, like who should we really be paying attention to? You're right. There are a ton of companies popping up, which, by the way. That's a good thing, right? It's a huge advantage. Right. That means there's this incredible diversity and competition within the Chinese EV market. But having said that, a few names definitely stand out. We touched on BYD a little earlier. Yeah, they were the ones. Exactly. The ones who basically control their entire supply chain, which is 
it's a big deal, but I feel like we kind of glossed over that. What does that even mean, and why does it matter so much? You're right. It's a crucial point. See, most car companies, especially the traditional ones... They've been doing things the same way forever. Right. They rely on this complex web of suppliers for all the different parts. Mm -hmm. But BYD, they took a completely different approach. They decided to manufacture their own batteries, their own chips. Heck, they even control a lot of the raw materials. So instead of relying on everyone else... They do it all themselves. And that gives them a huge advantage. They have so much more control over costs over production timelines. So they don't have to wait around for anyone. Exactly. Mm. If there's a shortage of something, it doesn't affect them as much because they are not reliant on someone else. And on top of all that, it lets them be way more flexible, way more adaptable. Like if there's a new technology... They can just roll with it while everyone else is stuck playing catch-up. You got it. And while BYD might be the king of vertical integration in the EV space... I love that term, vertical integration. It sounds so official. I know, right? But anyway... Even though they might be leading the pack there, it's not just them. A lot of these other Chinese EV companies, they're adopting similar strategies, which, again... Strengthen numbers. Exactly. And you know what else is interesting? They're not just competing on price anymore. Yeah. And this really stood out to me, that article about the Yangwang U9, the one designed by, what was it, a former Lamborghini designer. Yep, that's the one. And it's a huge signal, I think. Like, they're not just content with being the affordable option anymore. They're going after the luxury market, too. They want it all. And why not? They've got the resources. They've got the technology. And now they've got the talent. They're not afraid to go head-to-head -head with the best of the best. They're not messing around. But this whole thing, it does make me wonder, what happens next? It's kind of wild to think about, right? Like, China has been so strategic this whole time, and now they're dominating the EV game. But I got to ask, can they keep this up? Are there any challenges they're facing that could slow them down? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? And yeah, there are definitely some potential speed bumps on the road ahead. In fact, some of the research you sent mentioned that their growth has actually slowed down a bit recently. Oh, really? I hadn't heard that. What's causing that? Well, remember how we were talking about those government subsidies earlier? The ones that made EVs more affordable for everyday people in China? Yeah. It looks like those subsidies are starting to disappear. Ah, oh. So they were playing a bigger role than people realize. It seems that way. Yeah. And as those subsidies go away, it's putting pressure on some of these companies. It'll be interesting to see what happens to EV sales as a result. Yeah, I bet. But what about competition from other countries? I mean, surely the U.S. and Japan and Europe, they're not just going to sit back and watch China run away with the whole EV market. You're absolutely right. They won't just hand over the keys to the kingdom. Yeah. But catching up to China at this point, well, it's not going to be easy. For example, the research we looked at said that a lot of American electric cars still have a much shorter range than Chinese models. Hmm, that's a pretty big deal. And then there's the cost factor. Even with tariffs and all that, Chinese EVs can still be way cheaper. So, yeah, the competition has got their work cut out for them. It's a tough one to crack for sure. But speaking of challenges, there's been a lot of talk lately about the security risks of Chinese EVs. I mean, could yeah. that put a damper on their global expansion plans? Now, that's where things get really interesting. It's like we're seeing this global tug of war between, like, economic competition on one side and national security on the other. Right. It's like we all want cheaper, better cars, but not if it means compromising our like national security exactly and you can see why countries especially the u.s and some european countries are a bit hesitant they're worried about becoming too dependent on a geopolitical rival especially when it comes to something as critical as technology right it's a tough balancing act for sure so we've covered a lot of ground here but before we wrap things up i want to bring it back to our listeners why should they care about all of this even if they aren't in the market for a new car that's a great question and the answer is, this goes way beyond just cars. We're talking about a major shift in the global balance of power, not just in terms of the auto industry, but also technology, innovation, climate change, it all ties together. So whether you're a car enthusiast or not, understanding these trends is crucial for navigating the world we live in today and the world we're heading towards. That's a great point. It's like this whole China EV thing is just one piece of a much larger puzzle. Exactly. Well, on that note, I think we've reached the end of our easy deep dive. We've seen how China rose to prominence in the electric vehicle market, their recipe for success, and even peaked at the challenges that lie ahead. It's been quite a ride. It has. But like we said, this is just the beginning. The EV revolution is still unfolding, and it will be fascinating to see what happens next. 
Thanks for joining us on this electrifying journey. We'll see you next time.